Hello and welcome back to The Mix Academy. I'm David Glenn with TheMixAcademy.com. Today we're going to bring you The Mix Vault. The Mix Vault is going to come to you straight out of The Mix Academy's VIP membership. We've got several members that have chosen their mixes for this month's song and we're featuring it here. I'm going to give in-depth mix critique, review, uh, we're going to look at the low end. We're going to look at the top end. We're going to most importantly talk about the song, the energy, the vibe, the emotion, and uh, we got a lot to look at. But first, if you're new here, we'd love to invite you to check out my free Fix It in the Mix guide. It's a 17-page guide. It's going to help you take those average and poor recordings and turn them into something that's radio worthy. So you got those closet vocals, those poorly recorded drums, bass, keys, you name it. It's going to help you take those average tracks and do something special with them. So check that out. Free Fix It in the mix guide link in the description below all right so we've got the mix vault featuring my man jeremy rosado from american idol 10 years ago geez i can't believe it's been that long uh, i think it was top 12 13 of american idol and then last season dude's killing it he goes on the voice and uh cracks the top 10 so i think that means he's going to be doing the tour and get to produce an album and all that so uh who knows we may do another project for jeremy we'll see try to try to hit him up. But uh, yeah, we did a couple with him early on in his career after American Idol. And one of those was the Rewind EP. I want to say, man, it was like five or six years ago. Um, maybe not quite that long, actually, three, four years ago. And uh, mixed an EP, my man Joey Fernandez mastered it. And uh, we're going to feature one of those songs here right now. If you want to get your hands on these tracks, definitely you know, check out that link in the description. But uh, first up, I tell you what, let me play my mix. This is kind of the, the quote-unquote bar that we'll say for uh, for our members taking a look at my mix and doing their own thing. with the, There was not a set like direction or instructions with this particular mix, so uh, some of the members chose to follow my mix. Some of them chose to go their own way, and uh, we'll take a look at that and offer up some, some helpful insight to what they got going on here. So I tell you what, first I'm going to hit play. I'll let you guys listen to, if not all of my mix, most of it. And then when I go through and uh, give the, critic the criticism, the critique, the constructive criticism, uh, we'll start from there's from the beginning, kind of listen to maybe half of each, and I'll uh, give you guys some notes. So here we go.
taking my hands off the wheel I'm riding, you're driving for real Don't want it back, don't want it back Eyes off the road They're locked on the one in control Hands off the wheel I'm riding, you're driving for real Don't want it back, don't want it back Eyes off the road All right. I want to give a shout out to my man, Victor Encarnacion. Brother, it has been too long, man. Uh, incredible producer, Chicago, Illinois. Guy is a beast of a musician all the way around, but one of the most insane guitarists. Um, actually, I would say, Vic, it's probably your fault that I put the guitar down because I started to hear you play, and it was it was over, man. So uh, he produces produced this track, uh, incredible work, and then I would even say coming in as the mixer, Vic and I had a relationship where I almost kind of came in and on the back end, I won't say co-produced, but kind of help the production along. And so um, kind of just a collaboration there, teamwork with Vic, but definitely give him props, man. Incredible producer. And uh, I can't remember, is this four or five years ago now? Oof, geez. Time flies. So we've got a handful of mixes to get to. Um, I've got critique for my own mix. I'm sitting, I really love the transitions and use of delay and effects and things like that. Really vibing to it. The vocal for me, I don't know if I needed more compression. I, it, everything sits on top, but it just felt like it could have had a little more energy from the, the vocal compression. And then the doubles and triples, um, I would love to have maybe seen that spread a little bit in my mix. And then listening back, uh, I feel like Phil Tan over here. I don't know. You guys heard of Phil Tan, incredible mixer, mix a lot of Rihanna's early stuff. And uh, I saw an interview from him one time where he talks about uh, if a song he mixed comes on the radio, he has to turn it off because he doesn't want to listen to it. His, his mind just critical of himself. Uh, and I feel like that right now. I'm going through listening to some things. and uh, But a lot of good, I feel like, from that mix. So anyways, there you go. There was mine. Now we're going to take a listen to some of Mr. Bruce Allen, member of the Mix Academy's VIP. And uh, we'll see what he's done with this song. All 
All right, sweet. So, Bruce, a lot of good stuff going on here, man. Um, I really like your balances. Uh, there's a couple of things that we'll talk about in there, but uh, low end feels good. I've got a sub pack, so I'm feeling the the kick. I would say, um, let's start there. Uh, the the kick for me feels like a rock kick, and so I'm getting um, a uh, I don't know if you're familiar with like that sound, that kind of uh, a man's kick is uh, is a kick drum in the uh, what what sample library is it? I'm drawing a blank on the spot here, but um, it's giving me uh, rock vibes, and I would love to. I think the top end in it is almost taken away from the vocal um, down the middle there, and so I would look at maybe swapping that out. I'm going to show you a plugin I use. I know that I use this plugin when I um, redid the kick. Uh, for this song, for the mix, but we'll look at that in a second. Um, I'm not feeling the vocal room, the the reverb that you got for his his vocal. I don't know if it's too much of the double that's creating the room resonance is stacking, or if there's actually, it feels like a short room. Um, Just to my ear, my taste, I'm not digging that, but uh, maybe try something like a slap delay instead, so like a 90 to 120 millisecond delay, fill the timeout, see if you, you like that better. Um, but more importantly than that, I feel like I'm missing the transitions from the individual sections. This is kind of a unique tune in that you go from that intro to what feels like should be a more dry, intimate verse, um, where you feel the singer and you just got that kick kind of driving the rhythm. But then when it goes to the pre-chorus chorus chorus over here, I feel like that, that hit, especially from the verse pre-chorus to the chorus, I'm not getting that oomph that jump for the chorus that I need to feel for this song. Just fine, but I was hopeless, hopeless and I was broken, the harder than hard. So let's talk about that first. The the transition, and that's something that in the production I felt like I needed as a mixer to do my job to add fills. Um, you know, think toms, think drum fills with toms, snares, you know, rolling into that next section. Um, I felt like this production was a little empty between sections, but that made me excited as a mixer because I got to use things like delays to enhance those transitions. Let's take one more time, Bruce, your mix. Okay, and then let's find that same section in mine. And we got to change it from the cue to latch. The tougher and tougher it gets to let go. Actually, it's back a little bit, isn't it? Doing just fine. But when I look at this wreck, my prints are all on this mess. And I was running my life like I was doing just fine. But I was hopeless, hopeless, and I was broken. The harder than hard. That delay comes in and it's just like a chaotic delay spill, but it helps transition to that next session. Listen one more time. I was broken. Back it up a little bit. Doing just fine, but I was hopeless, hopeless, and I was broken. The harder than harder life. It's like a reverse cymbal swell, but I used delay to accomplish it. Back to the correct screen here. And if we listen to yours, it just kind of just keeps going, right? It's the tougher and tougher it gets to let go. So definitely listen to uh, my mix if you dig what I'm doing there. Um, again, mixing is subjective, art subjective. Uh, but listen for those fills, the, the places to create delay throws, even add reverse cymbal swells, anything that you can to enhance the transitions between the different sections. Um, there was a vocal dub at 45 seconds or so that came in that kind of overwhelmed the lead vocal here. Time to let go. It was back. Hands off the wheel. Oh, I'm still on my mix. Let's come back. That's why I wasn't hearing it correctly. The tougher and tougher it gets to let go. Ooh, ooh, ooh your rush has come down for the ride. I'm so that ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Let go. I've got the lead vocal kind of back, and then the ooh comes in a little warmer. Got more uh, of that one. I, I would say reverse them. Let's get the lead vocal up. Um, as far as the lead vocal frequency goes, I'm not digging. Let me see. It gets to let go. I don't think it's, it, I think it is the EQ, but I think it's more so that you got so much of the doubles. I would pick one of those 
to uh, the stacks to just get up on top and then use those um, the stacks, the layers, the doubled vocals, tripled vocals as enhancement, maybe even one off just to the left, one off just to the right, and just kind of pull those up a little bit to add that chorusing, the pop kind of vibe. Um, but I feel like it's a little bit too much. And if I remember correctly, I use quite a bit of layering with uh, multiple choruses and doublers. Uh, and then automated them on or off depending upon the word, the phrase, and the section of the song. Uh, which leads me to my next note was going to be uh, from section to section, the song should really have multiple emotional characteristics, uh, vibe, energy changes between each section. Whereas your mix, it feels like kind of has the same vibe the whole way through. For example, if we go to the chorus... Like there were missing bird uh, words, birds. What am I saying? We're missing words. So I'd love to hit that with some compression. Hit that main vocal track that you consider the main lead vocal. Smash it with some more compression so we don't lose words. And then if you have to, even after that, let's go back and lift up phrases. Check it again. I'll give you the keys. I'll give you just completely drops off a cliff, and we need to prevent that from happening. So let's help him out there. Okay, uh, one more thing here. I think I've got another note for you, but this chorus uh, for a modern pop song, a lot of different rock songs, it just depends. This is a song that's a prime candidate for that chorus needs to hit louder than the B section or the verse. And so what I like to do is I like to go to my mix. Um, and I think I've got a video. I'm sure I have a video talking about it where I drop at the beginning of a mix. I'll drop the overall volume minus one. Now this would be like your mix bus. So over here, this would be for me, the mix bus. I would take that down minus one at the beginning. So the intro, the verse is all at minus one. The pre-chorus, sometimes I'll lift up half a dB, so we'll go to minus 0.5. Um, sometimes i leave it alone. It depends on the song. Sometimes you want that full jump to the chorus, uh, the full 1 dB. In this song, I, I can almost guarantee you I gave it a full dB jump um, to where in between from the pre-chorus to the chorus, it gets 1 dB louder. Um, and I think that, uh, that your mix, obviously this song, same song, it would fit for this. So let me see let go. And that kick is just. Time to let go. Hands off the wheel. Same kick, right? So by having that one dB jump at the chorus, it's gonna feel like the whole thing just kind of popped. And then the other trick that I did in this song um, is I have a stereo imager on my all music bus. So guitars, Keiths in this case, synths, keys, all that stuff is at probably twenty to thirty percent wider from the start of the song, but then at the chorus, I'll automate that to go an extra 20 or 30, so we'll end up at 40 to 60% at the chorus, and then collapse that back down at the verse. And so, um, let me see, I'll play my mix and you can hear that example from, you can even see it visually in the waveform, intro, pre-chorus, chorus, right? So if we listen out here, versus here, a little bit louder, and then now let's listen from there to the chorus. You can clearly hear that it gets louder, fuller, wider. Let's check it out. Time to let go, hands off the wheel. I'm riding, you're driving for real. Cool. So clearly, uh, you can hear that jump. I hope you dig that. And uh, if you don't, then you know, ditch my advice. But there we go. So moving on uh, from Bruce. And make sure I got all my notes for him. Uh, verse to chorus transitions, transitions. And actually, Bruce, I'm not picking on you. Nobody did any transitions. I listened a little bit to each each mix beforehand, and nobody created delay throws and did the transition thing that I was hoping for. So I've got some, some thoughts on that. Actually, before we leave, Bruce, because I think everyone's mix is going to be valuable to hear this, um, I used a plugin called Kick2. I think it crashed Pro Tools last time that I opened it. Um, but I just updated it. We'll see if it lets me do it. I use this guy here, and the beauty about this, I went ahead and created a loop at the beginning of the song so you guys can see this in action super, super quick. Not what we're here for necessarily, but let's maybe loop this little section right here. 
and you can hear. So what I did when Vic sent this to me is I felt like the kick bass relationship needed some work. I felt like he chose a cool kick sound, but it wasn't giving me what I wanted from it, and it wasn't working well with the bass. So I went to doing what I do and producing in the mix, um, and I started shaping, and I used this guy here, and I did a tight, um, punchy kick in the verse, but then extended the decay. All I did is a duplicate of that kick that I created here with kick two, but added sustain at the chorus and then sidechain that into um, all the sense, which Vic, when he produced it, had already added a, a sweep or a pulse to a bunch of different scents. Uh, so that was there for me naturally, but with the bass, I really made that more aggressive and pushed it so that the kick can stay on top and it does a, you know the kick push pull thing with the bass. Um, so kick two, um, and the cool thing about this is, let me hit play, solo it out. It's probably probably a little loud for some of you guys. I don't know, is it? No, it's it's nice. It's nice. Okay. Um, the mixes are all uh, level match before we do the, the mix vault. So this is going to seem a little bit loud compared to the mixes, but we'll deal with it. Okay, so here you can change the uh, the initial transient, the pitch, um, the the slope, and then you've got the uh, the fundamental which is typically you're going to get that from here. So let's show you an example. Okay, so a quick, super quick summary. You can change the fundamental pitch, and then you can change the length. Create some sick bass drops, 808s even. And then if you want, like I did, I automated in the verse for the length to be tight. And then at the chorus, you could extend it. Or pre-chorus or create sub drops or whatever. So super, super quick look. You can change all kinds of stuff in here. That changes the transient, the shape of it, the tone that you're getting from it. You can have it to where it drops off to a... Got that. Oh, just love this plugin. It's a beast. And so you have this main module here where you're shaping that you got your amplification um, but then you also have these the different clicks and you can manipulate them here you can change them out over here so let's say we didn't like this one i mean it's insane what you can do let's see if i turn it off that time so I got my keyboard out of the way, so I have my notepad, so I'm a little bit janky here. But um, this guy here, I don't, I, I think they still sell it. I don't, I think it's still updated. This is by far my favorite kick generator for pop, dance. Um, I'll even use this for hip hop. Um, and then I like to use this whenever uh, I'm trying to shape a kick for the bottom end. It's just not working for me. Rock, I typically, I'm, I'm fine. I get, get what I need. But every now and then, you just don't, not getting what you need. And you can come in here and use this to use... Uh, for the generator, and you can actually just mute the clicks. I automate these sometimes. And then take out, shift this guy. Do that. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll literally use it only for the subs or the bottom end. got that one extending decaying whatever but you get the point so now you can shift and then rely on a different kick sample always check phase but a different kick sample for your mids or your top end maybe that you like the click and the kick better uh so this one of my favorite one of my go-to's for creating and shaping kick drums in pop dance all that good stuff and uh wanted to show you there because i think everyone who submitted a mix the ones we chose here to feature in this video could benefit from that guy. And then uh, I know I'm going to get the question, how do I create all those crazy delays? Sometimes it's just stock plugins with auto panners and then just layering, uh, pick a stock delay, find the time that I want, and then layer things like amp tones. And then um, maybe even the uh, saturators and that kind of stuff, play with different effects, modulation, phasing and flanging and just stack effects on effects, right? You can get super creative. Uh, my go-to, kind of an all-in-one, is actually the plugin Movement by Output. Pfft, insane plugin. Just cycle through some presets, you'll find something you like, and then what I do is I'll set that up as a delay throw and mute, uh, mute automation on and off for creating those different transitions. So 
uh, output and kick two plugins. I highly recommend if you're uh, wanting to get fancy with your uh, your kick production and your use of effects. Moving on, let's check out who do we have next. We have Camilla. Forgive me, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name, but if you uh, hook me up in the Discord, and uh, and I'll make sure next time I, I get your name right. But uh, yeah, here we go. So listening to Camilla's mix, Jeremy Rosado, trust. Good grip, thought I could captain the ship. But when I look at this wreck, my prints are all on this mess. And I was running my life like I was doing just fine. But I was hopeless, hopeless, and I was broken. The harder and harder life hits, the tougher and tougher it gets to let go. Ooh, ooh, ooh your love says I'm down for the ride. I'll give you the keys to my life. Time to let go, hands off the wheel I'm riding, you're driving for real Don't want it back, don't want it back, eyes off the road Sweet, Camilla, let's talk. So um, a lot of the same notes that we had, the tr- missing transitions, um, the the vocal dubs, the uh, little licks here and there, the little lines that he kind of uses as fills, um, uh, need some effects, need some stuff happening with those delays, uh, some reverb to kind of spill out and create some interest. Uh, the vocals are, uh, they're feeling muddy and scooped for me. So I would definitely go grab your EQ on your lead vocal and let's see, it's kind of a mastering situation here, so it's not going to be exact. But let's see if we can kind of boost some. All on this mess. And I was running my life like I would. That 800 hertz range, I need that back. If you've cut that, I'm missing that. And the clarity. All on this mess. And I was running my life. That kind of 2 to 3K even, 1 to th- one to 2, 2.5-ish. Uh, would love to have some more of that. That's going to pull your vocal and sit them on top. Uh, I would be careful ever pulling out too much in this range. A sweet spot in a vocal, um, male or female, is going to be kind of that seven 800 hertz range through to about 2K. Um, and so you, there's definitely times when you have to cut in those ranges. But more often than not, you're going to want to enhance them by either cutting either side of them um, a little bit. Or, uh, like we did here, just kind of boosting them. But I think I'm having to boost them because you've pulled some out just to my ear. That's what I'm hearing. Um, And then the other thing is, let's get a high pass. And we'll show you how to just set that high pass filter, the low cut, on a lead vocal. I like to just kind of start by doing too much. We can probably clearly agree that that's too much. We're missing some, some warmth in the vocal now. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of pull it back until it feels good. Um, and, until I'm not missing anything. On this mess, and I was running my life like I was doing just fine, but I was hopeless. I mean, a buck fifty, 150 hertz or so, and it feels good. It feels warm. Um, the stuff below that, I don't know that we really need. If you have a song where you do want it, you could always kind of high pass around 100 hertz and then place you a little bit of like a bell cut. And then getting fancy on you, we could even make it dynamic and compress against it to keep it in check. But a little fancier than we need to for your mix. I think uh, cleaning that vocal up is going to be huge. 
Um, next up, the low end is overwhelming in the bass, and I'm missing the kick. I'm like, oh, give me that kick as a driving pop song. I need to get that dance. I need to feel like we're, we're grooving. Um, give me that kick. And so uh, I don't know if it's just the bottom end in the kick. Let me listen. Mess, and I was running my Your kick click, I'm okay with because I, I would even like consider cutting the kick click the top end in the in the especially in the verse i don't think we need it it's just more of a, a pulse I, mess, and I, was running my life like I, was I mean 700 hertz and above i would probably just high uh, high cut out of your kick drum but then man let's get and I was running my life like was see we have so much low in energy when i go to boost it to try to showcase hey let's get some up in the kick the bass is just overwhelming and, and resonating so um, I would definitely get your kick up find the fundamental in your kick and boost it and then I would go to the bass and I would cut some from the the synth bass that you got happening uh, and then uh, if you take my advice from the other one what I did is um, I would gate your verse kick a little bit so it's kind of and then the chorus kick kind of resonates and takes over. I think that would be cool uh, to do that as well. So getting a little fancy on you, but I think you can handle it. Uh, let's see what else. So the vocals. The other thing is the um, the harmonies as well were, were muddy. So definitely clean those up. Maybe give a little more top end to the lead. Once you clean that up, I think it's going to sound good. Um, but that kick, man, is driving the track. And then definitely check out Bruce's notes. Um, I went off on Bruce and gave him a ton of ideas and thoughts. And I think it, it, it applies for everyone uh, here today. So the effects, the transitions, um, man, I can't wait to hear what you guys do when you go and revise your mixes. So Camilla, thanks for submitting it. And we're going to move on. Let's check out my man Klaus. Klaus, we've got... Uh, Jeremy Rosado Trust, and uh, let's see what he did with it. My brother, is that Waves? Are you using Waves plugins and you've got the analog on? If so, I don't know what where the hiss is coming from, but I'm going to guess it's that. Let's turn that off so we don't have all that extra hiss at the beginning of the track. Klaus, great stuff, man. Um, I'm missing the main synth at the intro. And I think I just because I've heard this song so many times, I know that it's supposed to be there. I don't know, maybe it might be muted or or what, but that is uh small potatoes. The click. I would like to have less click in the kick at the verse. But when I look at this 
that energy and that high end and the click, I feel like a similar note to what I gave Bruce at the beginning, takes away from the energy of that vocal. Um, I would love to have the vocal the start of the show with the verse, kind of a, a more dry. Uh, you got a lot of reverb in your vocal, um, but that kick to just kind of hit to carry you know, the groove, keep us moving forward, but not to overwhelm with the top end until the chorus, when we have more vocals and it can kind of hang, you know, it can keep his own on top of the track. Um, but, uh, click in the kick, I would say down in the verse and then feel free, open it up at the chorus. If you dig that tone, um, too much verb in that lead vocal. Thought I could captain the ship, but when I look at this wreck, my prints are all on the I just, I feel like that's his message. It's, it's a little spitty and it needs to be more in your face. And I feel like the reverb kind of softens the emotion of it a bit. I'd like to have more of more of him up in front and center. Um, and then the chorus, go nuts with the reverb. Uh, check out my mix as a reference um, to, to hear an example of that. But um, now I will say, I felt like my mix might've been a little too dry on his lead vocal, but meet me in the middle from what I did to what you did here. So uh, too much verb in the lead. Choose a lead vocal track to make the lead vocal. What I mean by that is we had multiple stacks. And so you have your lead vocal and then you've got the left, right dubs. And then um, I think it's like two, three, four times that he stacked his vocal. Choose that first one to make his official lead vocal. Get that up in the mix so we have that, you know, the spitty in your face tone. And then use the others to supplement, to kind of, help create that doubled effect. Um, and then what I would even do is, is you don't have to get this fancy, but automate certain lines, pull them up and then put them down. I did that with double plugins, doublers and chorus. Um, you know, you've been around the Mix Academy for a long time. I use uh, multiple chorusing plugins and layers, and then I'll automate them up or down depending upon the phrase and what the, uh, the emotion of the vocals are giving me. But I would definitely choose one main lead vocal to get on top of the mix and then blend those others up as needed to supplement. Um, and then the other thing, it feels too mono. It feels like we're kind of, we're living here with your mix. There's stuff that's panned a little bit, but I, man, I'm missing this full stereo spread. Um, and let me double check your chorus because I don't think it changed at the chorus. And again, you can see all one level here. Um, definitely check out the beginning of this video where I mentioned to Bruce, um, uh, I'm going to be saying that a lot. I gave him a lot of good tips that everyone could benefit from. Uh, the volume dip. Drop the overall volume 1 dB and then come back up 1 dB at the chorus so that you can feel the energy really hit at the chorus. Uh, let me see if we can find the chorus. This is how we feel. So let go. Hands off the wheel. I'm riding your track. So the... the from the verse to the pre-chorus to the chorus, it all feels like the same vibe. And I think this, similar to kind of that Bruno Mars track from years ago where, um, you know, that, uh, uh, oh, why am I, how am I going to draw a blank on one of the biggest mixers? Uh, Manny Mariquin. Manny talked about using different bus compression for the different sections because they had such a different vibe and he wanted to enhance that. With this one, it's more in the effects. I want to be able to in hear the difference between the verse, the pre-chorus, and the chorus in our use of the effects. And I think if you listen to mine, you'll get uh, what the client was after. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely take a listen to that and let me know what you think in the Discord. Uh, felt too mono. Sibilance, I, th I think it's more your EQ um, on the vocal. It's not like overly spitty sibilant, um, but uh, small potatoes there compared to the other things, I think. Um, and then that kick, man, give me some punch. Give me some punch in the kick drum. Let us let me see if we can, because I know you had some. Let go, hands off the wheel. I'm riding, you driving for real. So your kick is living a little more, little more in the 70 to 100 hertz range. Totally cool if you decide to go that route. Um, get, get more, mo better. I need more for me, from you. Uh, give me some more kick there, the fundamental, uh, if it's living there. And then uh, the bass, um, I don't know that there's enough there to worry about it, but you might want to cut a little bit in that range with the bass. I just, I would rather pull it forward and then side chain it because of the style of music. It's calling for that tug and pull kind of movement. Uh, but definitely get your, and let me double check, you might even want to come up with your with your uh, low end altogether. I just, I chose to dominate with the bottom end in the kick drum. 
And then the low end in the, the sub bass is shifting around that. It's not so much down there. If I were to mix this song again, my kick bass relationship, my kick would still dominate. I'd probably have a little more on the bottom end with the lows and the, uh, the sub bass. Let go, hands off the wheel. I'm riding, you're driving for real. I would certainly do the kick bass side chain. Um, and again, hey guys, anybody following along with this, it's in the VIP membership. Tag me at David Glenn in the Discord and uh, ask questions. If you have any questions, anything, techniques that I share here and you want me to go more in depth, let me know. But uh, Klaus, man, I think you did an incredible job and you hit some of those notes. You've got a, uh, a pretty cool mix. I know it's going to take a little while getting those effects and the transitions, but man, once you guys create that, uh, and if you don't already in the membership, have my template. Um, I maybe need to do a little workshop in the master, uh, excuse me, in the membership to break down my use of delay throws and stuff like that. And uh, really could be summed up like this. Go listen to uh, Jason Joshua, his mixes, pop mixes, and create your own version of what he's doing. The different delay throws and all that guy is a monster and uh, definitely an inspiration to what I've done with effects over the years. My man, Phil, Phil Jones, we have... Jeremy Rosado, Trust, same song, and uh, let's see what you got going on. I thought I had a good grip, thought I could captain the ship, but when I look at this wreck, my prints are all on this mess And I was running my life Like I was doing just fine But I was hopeless, hopeless And I was broken The harder and harder life is The tougher and tougher it gets To let go Ooh, ooh Your love says I'm down for the ride I'll give you the keys to my life Ooh, time to let go Hands off the wheel Okay, so I'm still kind of thinking through. Um, we've got a uh, like a pumping element. It looks like your mix is squashed to you know where and back. Um, and uh, I would say it's creating some negative artifacts. I'm getting some pumping that is taking the vocal away and bringing it back and some stuff like uh, I'm not sure what's going on. I would definitely um, address your two bus. If you haven't already, check out my video where I break down my chain, the mix A, B, C over here, where I've got my my two mix, um, where I throw a little bus compression, a little bit of love here, and then uh, when needed, parallel compression is mix B, mix C, parallel clipping. In this case, I wouldn't have used it. I would have used the clipper into a limiter, um, but maybe check that out, and I would adjust your two bus chain, and I think it's going to change your mix quite drastically, um, especially removing that pumping element. Um, but the, uh, the vocals feel like they need less effects. I don't know if it's the blend or if you've got too much modulation stuff happening. I'd be really curious to see your mix session. Um, I tell you what, tag me in discord, uh, and let me know if you mix in pro tools. Cause if so, I may have a way to, um, uh, to open that up with you 
coming up here one day soon so that we can can see what's going on. But the missing, the lead synth is Small Potatoes. That, that was at the beginning. Uh, that intro, I missed it on a couple of people's mixes. It's like super high pass. Um, that da 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 da. We need that one up and a little warmer in the mix. It's kind of the line that takes us into the verse. So I'd love to get that element up. But again, small potatoes. Those vocals, um, definitely less effects. Uh, same notes that I gave everyone else. The transitions from each section in the song. That chorus needs to hit harder. I would get that volume uh, down at the verse. And then up at the chorus, the 1 dB. Um, tag me again if you don't know what I'm talking about there. Uh, the harmonies are louder than the lead in the verse. Lord, I could captain it might have been the B section. And I was running my hopeless to let go. Ooh, I don't give you your try. It was after the first chorus. Oh, there it goes. I know I really gotta stop. I can't keep calling the shots. Cause when life turns up, Yeah, the uh, let's get the lead vocal up and then those harmonies to be a texture or a layer underneath it. I think it would sound really good. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it, it feels mono. So uh, the synths, I know it's hard to get sent a bunch of stereo synths. It's like, well, they're all stereo, so let's just put them all down the middle. Nah, we got to get away from that. Let's pick some to just grab that right slider if you're in Pro Tools and throw it hard left. Throw them hard right. And start to feel and experiment with the spread um, so that it doesn't just stay here the whole time, right? Uh, and then check out, um, I'll put a tag to my notes for Bruce where we talked about expanding at the chorus so that not only do we want to get a better spread for the, the static mix, the left-right decisions that you make, but we also want to maybe enhance that with an extra bit of width at the chorus where we automate an imaging plugin. Uh, but definitely, I would I would be interested if you will, uh, Phil, tag me when you revise your stereo bus. Maybe hit me on some of these notes, and I want to hear your revised mix so I can maybe give you some more valuable feedback once that uh, the vocals and the limiting is is addressed. So, moving on, let's take a look at Rex, and here we go. I had a good grip, thought I could captain the ship. But when I look at this wreck, my prints are all on this mess. And I was running my life like I was doing just fine. But I was hopeless, hopeless, and I was broken. The harder and harder life hits, the tougher and tougher it gets to let go. Ooh, ooh, your love says I'm down for the ride. Time to let go, hands off the wheel I'm riding, you're driving for real Don't want it back, don't want it back, eyes off the road Get locked on the one in control This is how it feels to drive, sting up, drive, I really gotta stop I can't keep calling the shots Cause when life turns up the heat I put myself in your seat But you gave your life And now I'm giving you mine Don't want it back It's a fact that I'll just break it The harder and harder Life hits the tougher and tougher It gets To let go Oh it gets so tough sometimes But your love says I'm down for the ride I'll give you the keys to my all right sweet wreck so uh same thing we're missing that lead synth at the beginning that kind of that stab that helps us take into uh take us into the verse um this is just the wrong kick sound for this song um 
I, I, I think I get why um, everyone has chosen to replace the kick. Uh, I chose to recreate the kick, but this tone um, is is uh, out of left field for me. We need to get a pop kick that drives this home, that hits hard down low. Um, the click in the kick is a little more uh, almost classic rock for me. Um, it's kind of a, a gentle kick. This thing is just boom, hit. Um, so definitely would love to get a, a better kick sample. Uh, check out my notes for Bruce. I talked about using kick two um, or just choosing a kick from your kick sample library that's got a really good bottom end uh, that works well with the bass. You just kind of sample through them while you solo the bass. And then high cut, take out all the top end and just use that kick for the bottom end. But find that kick that resonates well with the bass and gives you a nice oomph to drive this uh, this song forward. The, for me, man, the kick and the vocal and then the synths and then all the other moving pieces. Like this song is just, man, that that message, the aggression um, in his vocal and then... Uh, yeah, the 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 groove, just keeping it driving. So let's see. So the wrong kick, uh, less vocal verb in the beginning. They were v- pretty wet there. Let's see. If- and actually, I got to be honest. I really like your intro. Full, nice, warm bodied intro. Um, and I think I remember you're a bass player. So go figure. It sounds nice and full there. Uh, let's check out the verse though. We're all on this mess. And I was running my life like I would save the vocal reverb. Um, if you like it, maybe tame the top in and keep it a little lower, but then at the chorus. Let that chorus be where you can spill out and get some verb in there. But I would tighten that up and let the message be a little more clear at the verse, a little more dry. Um, and then I would compress the vocals harder. You've got some lines that are disappearing on me. Um, and then I've got too much low end in some of the, I should have put a timestamp so I knew where to. Hopeless and I was broken. The harder and harder life is the tougher and tougher it gets. Too so gets, that, that line right there is standing out. It's kind of distorting a little bit even from the, the compression or saturation. Uh, but some more even compression, and then I'm not a fan of the EQ there. Hopeless and I was broken. The harder and harder life is the tougher and tougher it gets. Uh, you can see around 700 hertz or so. I would I would tame some of that stuff in there. Hopeless and I was broken. The harder and harder life is the tougher and tougher it gets. And then I don't know that we need that much of the stacks. I would. Maybe balance those a little bit better. Um, definitely compress them a little more solid. And then I don't know, maybe the high pass is a little much. I may, I'm missing a little bit of 150, 200. I think it could benefit. Let me see. The and harder life is the tougher and tougher it gets. Yeah, I think compressing it a little harder, a little bit warmer. Um, and, uh, and I think those are going to be nice. Maybe a certain, I don't know, an effect for them. I don't... I don't know that it's uh, verb all the time, but some verb throws that kind of, I don't know, something for those. Those are throwing me off a bit. The, uh, but definitely less lo- vocal, vocal, I'm going loco, uh, vocal reverb on the lead vocal at the verse. Compress those vocals harder. A new kick needs to hit hard down low. And the other thing is be consistent. It sounds like you've got a more of a natural kick and it's alternating. It's kind of missing some hits and it's gentle, some hits, flubby. And then, and so we want that kick to just carry it, be consistent, the same sound over and over. Uh, and then the sense up, like I said, the kick driving, the vocal with the message, and then those sense up to kind of carry the tune. And then all the other parts are like just a bunch of ear candy that we incorporate as we need them. But um, good stuff though, man. You got some good stuff going on. I would love to hear your mix after you tighten it up with those notes. And uh, yeah, we're going to move on. Tyrone, my man Tyrone, one of the admins from within the Mix Academy VIP membership. And uh, he is uh, quite the mixer, mixes a lot more in the hip hop genres. I'm curious to hear what he did with this one. I know you missed the transitions, Tyrone, but uh, everyone did. So don't feel bad about that. So let's take a listen to my man Tyrone's mix. Thought I had a good grip Thought I could captain the ship 
But when I look at this wreck, my prints are all on this mess And I was running my life like I was doing just fine But I was hopeless, hopeless and I was broken The harder and harder life is, the tougher and tougher it gets To let go Hands off the wheel I'm riding, you're driving for real Don't want it back, don't want it back Eyes off the road Relax on the one in control This is how it feels to trust in you Trust in you Trust in you I know I really gotta stop Myself in your seat, but you gave your life, and now I'm giving you mine. Don't want it back, it's a fact that I'll just break it. Just break the it. harder and harder life is, the tougher and tougher it gets to let go. Oh, it gets so tough but your love says I'm down for the ride. I'll give you the keys to my life. Ooh. Time to let go. Hands off the wheel I'm riding, you're driving for real Don't want it back, don't want it back Eyes off the road all right, sweet. So Tyrone, check out Bruce's notes about the transitions and some of those effects. Man, I can hear you doing some stuff, left to right movement. Um, so I'm definitely digging that. The uh, the kick in the verse comes in and it's like a chorus kick. It's just boom, boom, resonating and everything. I would love to feel that energy a little tighter. Let it be a, a verse kick. Um, so pull in the sustain from that guy. Uh, tighten that joker up. And then let the full experience happen at the chorus but that that verse kick definitely would love to hear that gated or, or choked a bit um the kick bass is clashing at the um pre-chorus and the chorus i'm getting this clashing element so i don't know if we need to pitch shift the kick so that it resonates probably right to resonate better with the bass maybe do that first but then also i'd love to get more of that kick bass side chain so you get the tug and pull you get the dance uh side chain effect um, a little bit tighter would be awesome. And then um, I'm missing, I know I, I did it on my original version, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm missing it, right? I'm biased, but I'm missing the chorus tagline, trust, trust in you. Um, let me see if I can find it. This is how it feels to trust in you. I don't feel like he does enough it's not enough it's not enough interest it's not enough spice right we need some some paprika and some other stuff on there at the chorus let me see where is that for my mix <laughs> guitar player the dotted eighth delay the edge you know u2 delay um i'm can almost guarantee you that's an eighth on the left a dotted eighth on the right and then i've used outputs movement to create some more interest on that delay part and it's just hot and heavy for that line right now. let me put it back this is how it feels to try know did i create that kind of stutter effect as well i don't know that i did i think that was this is how it feels to try i think just because i have it compressed so much hotter um the effects it's kind of layered and thicker a little bit definitely check that out but dang tyrone you got a great mix going on man lots of good balances i can tell that you got a little more energy at the chorus so i dig that thank you for that um but dang it man overall some really good stuff from you guys on this one i know it's a tough song lots of tracks lots of moving pieces maybe a little more in the advanced level but uh it's cool to see you guys take it on and hey you did it so now we can learn from it hope you guys dig my notes if you guys are watching back on youtube and you want to become a part of the tma family definitely check out the links in the description below 
We've got the free guide, the free fix it in the mix guide. I think I've also thrown a, a link for my vocal mixing checklist. And then the new referencing guide, the ultimate referencing guide is down there. Link in the description for you guys to be able to uh, take my low end trick. It's going to walk you through everything similar to what I've done here for referencing, but uh, it's going to take the whole technique of referencing it's on steroids, and it's going to help you deliver an incredible mix. So thanks for hanging with me. If you guys watch the whole thing, you're a trooper, man. I need to start putting some some Easter eggs in here for you guys who, who uh, stick with me for the whole thing. But appreciate you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.